Welcome back, everyone. Happy New Year. A lot of you have been asking me if Marvel is going to recast Jonathan Majors Kang, all the Kang variants he was going to play. He was going to basically play all the main versions that they'd be fighting during Avengers 5. In a bunch of sites this week were reporting that they actually found a replacement actor. As a result, they're changing Avengers 5 story. And now a lot of you have also asked if they're going through this much trouble to recast such a major character like Kang, all the Kang variants, why didn't they recast Black Panther, for example, if he was so important to them on a story level? I'd argue they had even bigger plans for Black Panther than they did for Kang. They were going to make him the new center of the MCU, like everything going forward was going to revolve around him. Thankfully, Marvel has actually been pretty public with why they made certain decisions, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. It's a developing situation, especially with all the Kang stuff. But probably the biggest news you've all been seeing in your feeds since New Year's this week is that Coleman Domingo is supposedly Marvel's top pick to replace Jonathan Majors is all the different Kang variants. If they're going with him, I think he's a solid choice. He's a great actor. Most of you will either remember him from Fear the Walking Dead because he was on that for a number of years, and he was just the voice of the new Unicron in Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Presumably, he'll continue to play Unicron in future Transformers movies if he becomes Kang because it's a voiceover role, so there's no big conflict. In what a coincidence, a while ago, he actually talked about joining Marvel specifically as a villain. I'm jumping in. I, it, it's, it's funny, just the other day I was looking at something I thought like, that's wild. I haven't been a part of any, I'm, a, I'm part of the Fear of the Walking Dead universe, but I don't, when it comes to the Marvel or DC, I'm like, I think I'm ready now. You know, I'm worked out, fit. I think I want to play a villain. I just wanted to be the villain. I don't want to be the good guy. I actually want to be, do some really nasty, dirty work. So I want her to call me for a villain. That's it. That interview was taken before all the drama with Jonathan Majors went down. So I don't think he was talking to Marvel about Kang specifically when that was happening. But he might have had meetings with Marvel about other villains that he wanted to play. And that's why he was referencing that. And then the business with Jonathan Majors goes down earlier this year. Marvel still needs to wrap up their Council of Kang storyline somehow. It's such a big part of Avengers 5. And here Coleman Domingo is, ready to go, waiting to get called up from the dugout, and things just happen to work out for him that way. Let me know in the comments if Marvel is going to recast Kang, even if it's only to wrap up his storyline in Avengers 5, who do you want to play that character? They already established that variants don't all have to look the same way back in Loki Season 1. Like, you have people that look vastly different. Sylvie is probably the best example of that. She is another Loki that just happens to be a woman, looks completely different from Tom Hiddleston. Now, I know a ton of you are asking, if they're doing that for Kang, why aren't they recasting Black Panther? I'll get to that in a second. Marvel's been more open about why they did what they did with the Black Panther character. But they're still changing Avengers 5 story regardless of what they do with the actual Kang character. And it's all about getting past the whole Kang storyline just in general. Originally, it sounded like Marvel's plan was to actually pull a Naruto. Basically, they were going to copy some of the tropes of the series with their villains in their last couple of arcs. If you did watch that series or you read the manga, specifically the fourth Shinobi War, there was all kinds of backstabbing, lesser villains who were hyped up to be big bads, but then in comes a much bigger villain killing the lesser villain to show how they were so much more powerful and dangerous, the heroes have absolutely no hope. So if you hear people joking about how Marvel is pulling a Naruto with Avengers 5 and the Council of Kings, that's what they're talking about. It's been posted many times before, but you see people using this Rick and Morty meme to basically explain the progression of all the different villains. You have to imagine Marvel doing this with the Council of Kangs. Oh, the him over there, he wrote me into this. Well, he wrote me into this. Well, what about me? He, he wrote me into this. Well, that one over there wrote me. Basically, you end with like one major villain killing all the lesser villains, and that winds up being some greater villain killing the Council of Kangs. Marvel's version of this would have involved the Council of Kangs coming for the new main 616 Avengers in the main universe. They wind up fighting the three main variants that are at the head of the Council we saw in the Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania post credit scene. Immortus, Scarlet Centurion, the Rama Tut version of Kang. Marvel winds up pulling an Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame with them where they basically divide the Avengers into a couple different teams, this time three different teams for the three different variants. Like Infinity War, you have one team fighting Thanos on Titan, the other fighting the Black Order in Wakanda. Ultimately, the new Avengers collectively lose, like they get their asses handed to them, but in comes a more powerful villain, Naruto style, who kills the Council of Kangs, and then you lead directly into Avengers 6 Secret Wars with them collapsing the rest of the multiverse. Kind of like a bigger multiverse version of the Avengers Infinity War ending where Thanos snapped the Infinity Gauntlet. 
you basically wind up with all the heroes waking up, but they're on Battle World, and most of them from the main universe died. They're just a bunch of survivors from other universes, like the X-Men universe, with Hugh Jackman's Wolverine still being there, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man universes, with them being on Battle World. Here's where we get to the big changes. It sounds like Marvel's making behind the scenes with the story just overall. Originally, Avengers 5 was called Avengers Kang Dynasty. In the MCU, the Council of Kangs is canonically called the Dynasty of Kangs. Basically, the Council of Kangs fighting the Avengers. Reportedly now, since they're recasting Jonathan Majors, they've taken the Kang Dynasty off the title of Avengers 5, and they're just referring to it as Avengers 5. They might change to some other title for the movie. Marvel trademarked a bunch of movie titles as placeholders a long time ago, like Avengers Eternity War. They have infinite options that they can pick from. Either way, Avengers 5, they wrap up the Kang storyline, and a bigger villain comes along that's totally different and destroys all of them. Now there's a question about who that bigger villain is going to be. There's a lot of different arguments about who would be a better pick. Variety reported earlier this year at Marvel's annual story retreat where Kevin Feige, the other Marvel brass, decide the future of all the movies and the TV shows that Marvel discussed pivoting to Doctor Doom as a character, like we joke about the great Marvel pivot. I've talked about him in the MCU in past videos. There are a couple things they have to do before they can use him as a big Avengers level character, namely develop him in a couple other movies first, but they could use him. They still have a little time to work him into a couple movies, even if they delay Avengers 5 to 2027, which it seems like they might now, like even more delays for that. The other really obvious option, most of you have also thought about this, is they could just use the Beyonder character. If we know that they're going to do Secret Wars, the Beyonder and the Beyonder's race are huge parts of both versions of Secret Wars, it's just as easy to use him, even if they change the character. For example, before all the Jonathan Majors drama, originally there had been reports that they were going to make the Beyonder the main villain of Secret Wars, but he was going to be another Kang variant played by Jonathan Majors that was just calling himself the Beyonder, like that original version that you thought died during Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania would come back, and they were going to make the movie a little bit closer to what they did with Thanos in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, where the same actor winds up being the villain in both movies, kind of, just slightly different versions of the character. Like, final boss Thanos here in Avengers Endgame wasn't exactly the same as Infinity War Thanos. He was a younger version who had slightly different goals. He was going to wipe all of existence in this universe and restart from scratch. Marvel could still use the Beyonder plan that they originally had with a recast version of Kang. Like, don't change the story that much, just recast the actor. But they still have to establish the new Kang variants, like the new actor, before Avengers 5. I think it'd be a smoother transition than what we got with Don Cheadle being recast as Rhodey after Marvel fired Terrence Howard. I not expect to see you here. Look, it's me. I'm here. Deal with it. Let's I, move on. I, I just... I Drop just, it. All right. That's the example that everybody points to. Like, what if they just showed up at the beginning of Avengers 5 and it was just a totally different actor and they had some line like this. Like, yeah, it's me. I'm here. Stop asking questions about it. As easy it would be to do that, we're not talking about like a solo movie here. Even though Iron Man 2 was a pretty big movie, it was still a solo movie. We're talking about like a huge Avengers level movie. Everybody on the planet would be going to see this. So they need to kind of ease people into that transition. All they need though is like a single post credit scene before Avengers 5. Like whatever that final movie before Avengers 5 winds up being. You literally don't have to mention Kang once until that last post credit scene. Then you pick up with someone like Coleman Domingo in Avengers 5 and it all makes sense. Then at the end of that movie, you have the Beyonder or Doctor Doom show up and kill everybody on the Council of Kangs and end on a cliffhanger creating Battle World. They're supposed to be setting up the whole concept of Battle World during Deadpool 3. And there have been reports about them just expanding the Secret War story and doing it as a two-part movie so that Avengers 5 becomes more like Secret Wars. The funny thing about that too is that they just had the What If Season 2 finale. The finale was kind of like a soft test run for what Secret Wars would be like with a bunch of different versions just going crazy on screen. I literally just did a video for that. But I know a lot of you have also started asking, why is Marvel recasting Kang but not Black Panther? So in Marvel's own words, the producers that were actually responsible for making that decision a couple years ago when they were getting ready to make Black Panther Wakanda Forever said that because of the circumstances behind Chadwick Boseman's passing at the time that they were doing all this, making these decisions, it felt inappropriate to just recast him and pretend like nothing had happened. Like just go with the original story they had intended for in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. They said at the time what they wanted to do is they wanted to change the movie to address his passing both in real life and in universe, which is why they had his funeral at the beginning of that movie. 
They eventually wanted to replace him with his son T'Challa Jr. once he came of age. No idea when that's going to happen, but that was basically their move. Instead of just straight up recasting him, give him a son, name him T'Challa, so that in however many years you have T'Challa Black Panther, it just happens to be his son, played by a totally different actor. No matter what they do going forward, Marvel's going to be in a really tight spot, so it'll be interesting to see how they try to get themselves out of this one. Whatever they wind up announcing, whatever winds up happening, of course I'll do videos for it, so no worries. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. We have the Echo episodes coming next week. Then we're going to get X-Men 97 episodes really soon. Cannot wait to see what they did with their new X-Men episodes. Everyone click here for my What If Season 2 Episode 9 finale video. It does kind of go full Secret Wars. And click here for that new Daredevil Echo trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year, everyone. And I'll see you in the next one.